just about to come on and, and someone said to me, Ooh, the last thing you lot want is probably another jungle explorer talking about his deeds. Uh, what they want to hear about is the worst thing you've had to eat. So I was thinking, oh dear, what, what is that? And I've just been giving it a bit of thought. Um, I think it's probably in New Guinea. You know, what? I was uh, very young. I didn't know what it was like to be an explorer. And I was deep walking through the forest of New Guinea. And someone uh, had told me that there were amazing berries in this jungle, juicy berries that were incredibly nutritious, gave you masses of energy. And I thought, this is amazing. This is what being an explorer must be about, gathering all these local resources. So I said to my two guides, uh, any chance you could rustle up something to eat? And these two men sighed heavily and they sat down uh, on their log and said, oh, what can we get this bloke? He's clearly an amateur. And then they disappeared off and I sat there I thought, well, hopefully come up with something at least. They came back about 10 minutes later and they were really excited now. They were uh, lacerating, they were, they were salivating, they were getting really, really excited about something they got and I thought, what is it? And they opened their hands and there were no berries. Instead there were sago grubs. I don't know if you know what a sago grub is. It's like a maggot. It is a maggot effectively. It's a very big one. It's a very wriggly one. And uh, they're very, very kind, these men. They gave me the four biggest sago grubs. I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to eat it. And I, I took the first one and uh, looked at it, and it seemed to look back at me. I thought, oh dear. And I put it into my mouth and thought, ah, right, I've swallowed it down. But this sago grub, ladies and gentlemen, was, was special. It was like you lot. It was determined to uh, succeed, whatever the cost. And certainly it wasn't going to die. And it managed to stop itself on the bottom of my throat. And I thought, that's not right. And then slowly it began to turn around. And I went, ooh, ooh. I tried to swallow it down. And uh, I felt it started crawling up. Um, and, and it was getting higher and higher. And I was still I was going, ooh, ooh. and this sago grub was going, yes. Well, it, uh, to, be on, to be honest, it wasn't actually speaking, uh, but um, it more or less said yes. And finally, it jumped out of my mouth. And um, I didn't actually manage to succeed uh, in eating that particular Sega grub, but I've always sort of held it up as a sort of role model, because I thought, wow, you know, we admire creatures like the crocodile, the alligator, uh, and all these amazing big mammals uh, like the jaguar. Uh, but here was a modest little Sago grub, and it had that certain special something. So there we are. Um, that is my Sago Grub story. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you were ever the sort of child who went walking along a rocky beach and found yourself keeping going, wondering what was around the next corner, then you are an explorer, the sort of person who wanted to find out. And maybe just like me, when you were little, you used to gather all sorts of things that you collected, fossils and bird's deaths, uh, fur fossils and bird's nests and all sorts of things that you, you gathered and put them in your bedroom shelves. And you thought about exciting places. I had an uncle who used to tell me about places like the Amazon and Borneo and New Guinea. And I thought, one day I'm going to get to these exciting places. And I clung, up, I clung on to that dream and through school and through university. And finally, I worked in a warehouse and got myself to the place I've dreamt of ever since a little boy. Ooh, there it is. And there I was amongst this forest, and it was absolutely horrible. I couldn't believe it. 100% humidity, insects screaming in your ears. I discovered you couldn't wear the same pair of underpants for more than, say, two weeks. I don't know if you've had this problem yourselves. I, oh, you all have. Oh, that's great. Because um, uh, fungi starts to grow in all the crevices, if you know what I mean. And it wasn't just the wildlife that was trying to get to me. It was the local people. I was paddling along my canoe one day, and I found myself being shot at. And um, I, I've just discovered actually, it's quite tricky in my career, um, when you ever, you're being shot at, you can't actually ask why, um, <laughs> so you can't sort of stop. Um, but uh, I now know that I'd wandered into the territory of a man called Pablo Escobar. Do you remember him? It's, oh, some of you might have had business dealings with him. Um, he, he, he's, uh, he was running the biggest uh, drug cartel in the world, the Medellin drug cartel. Amazing turnover, three a million dollars a year or something like that, 3,000 million, I think. Anyway, um, this man was hiding out in the lowlands. Uh, he was killed actually about six months later, but unfortunately I'd gone past his camp a little bit too near. And he'd sent two men to go and kill me. And these men were paddling their canoe, and I was ahead paddling my canoe. Obviously, not too fast because I'm British. <laughs> you know, one doesn't want to panic, you know, too much. Um, but nonetheless, you know, these bullets were whizzing by my head, and I was getting a little bit worried. And to be absolutely honest, it was a, a bad day. I mean, <laughs> these people were behind me, professional assassins, and they had their gun at my head, and I was waiting to receive a bullet in the middle of my back. And it didn't come. And I was thinking, why haven't they killed me yet? I mean, I'm big, I'm an easy target. These people are 